Greetings, gentlemen. I am Isaac Newton, a natural philosopher from England, and I have formulated the laws of motion and universal gravitation, as well as the infinitesimal calculus. And I've also studied optics, alchemy, and theology. It is an honor, sir. I am James Clark Maxwell, a physicist and mathematician from Scotland. I've developed the classical theory of electromagnetic radiation, which unifies electricity, magnetism, and light. I have also contributed to the kinetic theory of gases, optics, and algebra. And I am Albert Abraham Nicholson, a physicist from Prussia who emigrated to the United States. I have measured the speed of light with great accuracy and performed the famous Michelson-Morley experiment that disprove the existence of the luminiferous ether. I have also invented several optical instruments, such as the interferometer and the stellar interferometer. I'm impressed by your achievements, gentlemen. You have advanced the science of light and motion far beyond what I could imagine in my time. Tell me more about your discoveries. Well, sir, you were the first to show that light is composed of different colors that can be separated by a prism. You also proposed that light is a stream of corpuscles that obey your laws of motion. However, I have found that light is actually a wave phenomenon that can be described by four equations that bear my name. These equations show that light is an electromagnetic wave that travels at a constant speed in a vacuum. That is true, sir. I verified Maxwell's theory by measuring the speed of light with a rotating mirror and a beam splitter. First, my result was 299,853 kilometers per second, which agrees with Maxwell's prediction. However, there was a problem with Maxwell's theory. It assumed that light waves propagate in a medium called the ether which fills all space and is at rest relative to the Earth. And what is wrong with that assumption? Well, sir, if the ether exists, then we should be able to detect its motion relative to the Earth by measuring the difference in the speed of light in different directions. And that's what I tried to do with my colleague, uh, Edward Morley, in 1887. We used an interferometer to compare the speed of light along two perpendicular arms of equal length. If the ether exists, we expected to see an interference pattern that shifts as the Earth moves through it. And what did you find? We found nothing, sir. No matter how we oriented our apparatus or when we performed our experiment, we always obtained the same result, and the speed of light was constant in all directions. This meant that either the ether does not exist or it somehow drags along with the earth. And that is very puzzling indeed. Yes, sir, it is. Many physicists have tried to explain this null result by modifying my theory or introducing new hypotheses. Some have suggested that the ether is partially dragged by matter or that it has different properties in different regions of space. Others have proposed that length contraction or time dilation occur when objects move through the ether. They are concepts from a new theory of relativity that was proposed by Albert Einstein in 1905. He showed that space and time are not absolute quantity, but depend on the state of motion of an observer. He also showed that mass and energy are equivalent and that nothing can travel faster than light. And that sounds very strange and counterintuitive. It does indeed, sir, but it explains many phenomena that cannot be accounted for by classical physics, such as the photoelectric effect, the Brownian motion, and the anomalous precession of Mercury's orbit. And I open my eyes to a new world of physics that I never dreamed of. And you have inspired us with your genius and your discoveries. Indeed, sir, you are 
the greatest scientist of all time. And thank you, gentlemen. But I must remind you that I have seen further by standing on the shoulders of giants. You are the giants of your generation, and I am honored to have this conversation with you.